This is a wheat crop field that belongs to Dr. Tariq Aziz. Tariq is an agronomist and he is there in the field to observe visual symptoms for any biotic or abiotic stress. For example, water stress, nutrient stress or diseases. पे रस्ट का हमला है ये देखें ये ये रस्ट की वजह है क्रॉप डिजीजेस एंड इंसेक्ट पेस्ट आर नाइटमेयर फॉर ए फार्मर रिड्यूसिंग हिज प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी एंड इंक्रीजिंग हिज कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन ऑल इंसेक्ट्स आर नॉट हार्मफुल सम ऑफ देम आर यूजफुल फॉर देयर रोल्स इन पोलिनेशन एंड प्रिडेशन The harmful insects or insect pests damage the crop directly by feeding on them or indirectly by acting as vector of pathogens. Identification of plant diseases as well as harmful or beneficial insects is critical for developing the integrated pest management strategies against pathogens and insect pests which together cause 50% yield losses of the total losses caused by biological sources plant diseases and insect pests often change the course of history for example potato blight destroyed half of the potato crop in 1845 and about three quarters in the next seven years known as the famous irish potato famine or the great hunger the great hunger caused the death of 1 million irish with at least an other 1 million who were displaced from their homeland a fungal disease called rust is of historical importance which affected the human history for centuries the rust caused the soviet famine of 1930s and prompted mexican farmers to seek help from the us during 1939 to 1941 in 1943 the famous bengal famine caused millions of farmers to abandon farming and join the british army this famine was caused by rice crop failures due to a disease brown leaf spot in 1860s coffee rust disease was introduced to sri lanka this rust disease causes the sri lankan farmers as well as the industrialists to shift from the arabic coffee plantation to tea plantation not only this disease affected the sri lankan farmers and industrialists but also the other nations for example when coffee shipments stopped the british shifted from drinking coffee to tea likewise powdery mildew of grape wines caused 80% reduction in french wine industry so these are some of the historical diseases which changed the course of history but they also helped in advancing the science of plant pathology new materials techniques and tools were developed to combat these various types of diseases however some of the diseases still continue to threaten crop productivity and our economies for example rust and brown leaf spot here you see two types of plants one plant is at ease and the other plant is not at ease the plant that is at ease we call it a healthy plant and the plant that is not at ease we call it as unhealthy or diseased plant so a disease is any deviation of the plant from one or more of its normal physiological functions 
the important physiological functions of plants include cell division photosynthesis respiration transpiration and absorption of water and minerals the deviation of plant from its normal functioning is caused by three things a disease causing agent what we call as pathogen a susceptible host that is plant and the favorable environmental conditions these three factors together form the disease triangle so a disease may also be defined as the malfunctioning of afflicted cells and tissues attributed to the presence of a causal agent which produces a symptom for example changes in form or physiology or integrity or behavior a symptom is plants response to pathogen that we are able to see the extent of damage caused by a pathogen and plants potential for recovery from the disease depends on the nature and prevalence of pathogen the kind of cells or tissues affected and plants resistance or susceptibility to a pathogen as well as one or more of the environmental factors such as humidity or temperature if plant leaves are affected by a disease like blight then plants photosynthetic area is reduced whereas if a root is affected by a disease such as root rot the conducting vessel vessel may be affected affecting the translocation of water and minerals a decrease in photosynthesis and ultimately decrease in yield there are tens of thousands of diseases which must be classified in order to be able to identify and manage those like crops weeds and insects plant diseases can also be classified in several ways the operational categories of plant diseases include classification based on symptoms plant organ that is afflicted plant category the causal organism or factor common plant symptoms include blight rots canker rust smuts mosaics and yellows based on plant organ afflicted diseases can be categorized as root diseases foliage diseases fruit diseases stem diseases or kernel diseases disease classification based on the causal organism or factor is the most widely used as it is the most useful system by knowing and studying the causal agent as well as its nature functioning or behavior we can readily develop effective strategies to control those agents biotic diseases are caused by pathogens or disease causing agents that may be transmitted from one victim plant to another these organisms are fungi viruses parasitic plants like dodders prokaryotes nematodes and protozoa abiotic diseases are caused by one or more environmental factors and are non infectious they they include abnormal levels of growth requirements for example too high or too low temperature drought or flooding stress low or high light intensity nutrient deficiencies or toxicities lack of oxygen pollution improper culture practices or improper ph a disease cycle is the series of events that occurs during the evolution of a disease for example inoculation penetration infection dissemination overwintering or oversummering and plants also have some defense mechanism to ward off 
the invasion of pathogens for example structural forms of defenses like uh, uh, plant leaves have a waxy layer called cuticle that resists to the entry of pathogens and sometimes some plant organs have hair like structure that also helps to ward off the pests certain plants have some biochemical form of defense the potato varieties which are low in reducing sugar are less susceptible to bacterial soft rot and phytoalexins are chemicals secreted by plants on injury to ward off the pest attack a plant disease is a deviation from normal functioning of plants so in most cases the disease destroys or weakens the cells or tissues but in some cases due to stimulation of cell division there is proliferation of cell and amorphous growth for example tumors so overall the plant diseases affect different plant processes or functions such as photosynthesis respiration translocation transpiration and growth plant diseases such as blights and leaf spots decrease the overall uh, photosynthetic area or leaf area resulting in chlorosis or loss of chlorophyll a visual symptom of which is yellowing of leaves they result in decreased starch metabolism reduced carbon dioxide fixation and overall low growth plants or tissues which are under pathogenic attack especially in case of obligate parasites their rate of respiration is increased in some cases it is doubled the plants predominantly shift from glycolysis to pentose phosphate pathway and the infected tissues have low amount of atp or energy if we talk about translocation uh, diseases which cause the vascular wilts caused by uh, fusarium or other species they block the transpiration stream and thus affect the translocation similarly the uh, rot diseases such as root rot they also obstruct the uptake of water and minerals and thus reduce the translocation and overall crop growth as the key plant processes photosynthesis respiration transpiration and translocation are affected the overall growth of plant is also affected resulting in reduced biomass accumulation and the effects on growth hormones and growth regulation in case of viral infections Uh, the result is uh, overall stunted growth so in case of extreme events uh, plant death may occur of the whole plant or of the economic or marketable part of the plant for example damping of disease in which uh, the whole seedling is killed or the ergot disease which affects the grain formation and destroys the is affect the overall uh, biomass accumulation or biological yield while others affect the marketable parts such as uh, storage out of strawberries insect pests have a profound effect on human beings animals and crops in human beings and animals they cause annoyance by biting stinging and transmitting diseases insect pests are uh, reduce the agricultural productivity by chewing the uh, plant leaves or other parts sucking plant juices boring into stems and roots and transmitting diseases they also feed on natural fibers 
and contaminate the product. The stored grain pests significantly reduce the quantity and quality of final produce. Some of the threatening insects in Pakistani cropping systems are aphids, jassers, fruit flies, ball worms, borers, leaf folders, grasshoppers, and termites. Recently, Pakistan is fighting against uh, locust swarms, which is no less threat than the COVID-19 pandemic. Locust is threatening food security and livelihoods of farmers. ये इस वक्त जनाब रात के तकरीबन नौ बजे ड्रोन से स्प्रे कर रहे हैं इंसेक्ट्स आर स्मॉल इनवर्टिब्रेट एंड हाईली सक्सेसफुल क्रिएचर इन द एनिमल किंगडम अबाउट 80% ऑफ ऑल एनिमल लाइफ कंसिस्ट्स ऑफ इंसेक्ट्स एंड about 600 species of insects are known as pests. Insects belong to the phylum Arthropoda and class Insecta. Insects have six legs that are jointed. Segmentation that is a main body with three segments. An exoskeleton that is a shell-like outer covering. And bilateral symmetry. There are many theories why insects are so successful. These include their small size, their ability to fly, uh, metamorphosis, that is the gradual change in their developmental stages, uh, wide variety of food sources, their ability to adapt uh, to different habitats, and their ability to reproduce fast. They have multiple or multi-generations. There are 600 species of insects that are known as crop pests. However, all insects are not harmful. Some of them are very beneficial, called as beneficial insects. Insects have many benefits. For example, they are food for human beings, aquatic life and birds. They are decomposers and play their role in nutrient cycling. They act as parasites and predators, they play their role in pollination and they make useful products like silk, honey, beeswax, etc. Based on mouth parts and feeding habits, insect pests can be categorized into chewing or sucking insects. The chewing insects have chewing mouth parts called as mandibles uh, which they use for chewing plant tissues while feeding. Larval stages of insects, beetles and army worms are examples of chewing insects. The symptoms of chewing insects are seen as defoliation, boring, leaf mining and root feeding. The sucking insects are also called as piercing insects. Sucking insects puncture plant tissues and suck fluids during feeding. These insects may cause additional damage by injecting toxins or transmitting plant pathogens as viruses or bacteria into the plant. These examples of sucking insects include whitefly, aphids, jassers, and leafhoppers. An insect begins as an egg that may develop through several growth stages until maturing into an adult. A term metamorphosis is used to describe these gradual developmental changes an insect passes through. Based on metamorphosis, insects can be classified into three groups. In group 1 or no metamorphosis, the insects emerge from their eggs as miniature adults, for example silverfish. In group 2 or incomplete metamorphosis, 
nymphs emerge from eggs and gradually develop complete adult features and size for example aphids leaf hoppers and grasshoppers in complete metamorphosis an insect has four separate life cycle stages egg larva pupa and adult examples of insects with complete metamorphosis include butterflies and stem borers one of the most tedious jobs on the part of uh, agrarians in particular agronomists entomologists and plant pathologists is the control or management of insect pests and diseases so a sound pest management strategy is based on five basic principles number 1 is exclusion in this strategy of exclusion an organism is prevented to enter into a locality and if that organism is able to enter into a locality it is prevented from establishing itself so this is the number one strategy second strategy is eradication so if an organism has established in a locality efforts are made to to prevent its spread and survival and ultimately eradicating it from the locality third strategy is protection uh, for example for a disease to happen uh, three things are required a disease causing agent pathogen a susceptible host and the favorable environmental conditions so in the prevention strategy the host pathogen interaction is prevented by some physical or chemical methods fourth strategy is resistance uh, which has genetic basis so genetically resistant cultivars are bred uh, to cope against certain insect pests and diseases and last strategy or principle is no action uh, simply the presence of a pest or uh, an insect or pathogen does not warrant uh, the impl implementation of uh, a pest management strategy so only those pests are focused uh, which are of uh, significance importance or they are the major pests in case of uh, minor pests no action is uh, taken immediately but certainly they are uh, kept under watch and ward the important considerations for designing a pest management strategy include the density of pest populations an estimate of the expected crop damage and economics of management strategy that is being considered the economic injury level is an estimate of the pest population density at which the value of the crop yield loss prevented is equal to the cost of implementing a treatment and the action threshold is defined as the pest population density at which treatment is necessary to prevent economic injury or prevent the pest population from reaching the economic injury level in this regard certain preventive measures may be employed for warding off the pest attack as they say prevention is better than cure so some of the effective preventive measures include uh, number 1 the use of adapted cultivars which are adapted to the local conditions and more resistant to the local insect pests and diseases similarly use of resistant cultivars which are resistance which have resistance to certain insect pests such as bt cotton or to certain diseases use of high quality seed uh, which is certified and purchased from reliable sources which has high purity and high germination percentage seed bed uh, should be prepared to provide 
ए प्रॉपर मीडियम फॉर क्रॉप ग्रोथ एंड टिलेज ऑपरेशन दैट रिमूव वीड्स आर हाईली इफेक्टिव इन कंट्रोलिंग पेस्ट अटैक बिकॉज वीड्स आर एन एक्सीडेंट आल्टरनेट होस्ट फॉर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ पैथोजेंस एंड इंसेक्ट पेस्ट इन ग्रीन हाउस प्रोडक्शन और कंट्रोल्ड इन्वायरमेंट प्रोडक्शन द सॉयल और एनी अदर ग्रोइंग मीडिया दैट इज़ बींग यूज मस्ट बी स्टेरलाइज अगेंस्ट सॉयल बॉर्न पेस्ट प्लांटिंग टाइम कैन बी एडजस्टेड टू अवॉइड डिफरेंट डिजीजेस और इंसेक्ट पेस्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट इज़ रिकमेंडेड टू सो द राइस नर्सरी आफ्टर ट्वेंटियथ मे adequate nutrition and irrigation improves the health of plants which are better able to resist the pest attack good sanitation during production reduces plant debris that is left on soil after harvest and in the controlled environment production sterilizing soil cleaning and disinfecting tools and hanging the water hose after use are strategies for reducing disease incidence so these are some of the preventive measures that must be employed to control pest attack next we talk about the five major methods that is biological cultural legislative physical and chemical uh, which are part of the integrated pest management strategy among cultural or agronomic strategies the number one strategy or method is crop rotation which is also called as sequence cropping crop rotation is a temporal arrangement which means alternating crops in different season on the same piece of land it is a technique of growing different crops on the same land over a definite period of time to cover economic environmental as well as biological risks like pests crop rotation is an effective strategy to control weeds uh, by including a multi cut fodder crop in weed infested fields crop rotation can also effectively control uh, diseases such as red rot in sugarcane stock rot in maize and scab in potato uh, which are a real threat in these cropping systems next important strategy is sanitation different pathogens and insect pests over winter or over summer in plant remains and therefore it is necessary to clear the debris by using appropriate tillage practices for example to control red cotton bug or disky cotton bug mango mealy bug american ball worm and army worm using resistant cultivars is an effective strategy for controlling insects like jacid and diseases like rust and red rot the application of a plastic mulch helps to trap heat in the soil so this may be used uh, to sterilize the field by solarization technique the heat kills certain pathogens and weeds Logging is the removal of infected plants from field uh, to eradicate the host. On a larger scale, uh, a disease outbreak can be curtailed by destroying all the crops in that region that are susceptible to a particular disease. Adjusting the planting or sowing dates is an important agronomic practice. For example, it is highly recommended to prevent early sowing. Uh, in order to prevent the attack of disky cotton bug in order to control rice blast uh, late sowing must be avoided and in order to control various stem borers in rice the rice nursery must be sown after 20th may liming helps to increase ph uh, that can control certain fungal pathogens such as Uh, those causing potato scab certain pests uh, prefer moist conditions 
In this case, drainage improves aeration and prevents non-pathogenic diseases induced by oxygen deficiency. Uh, lastly, manipulating the crop density is an important agronomic measure which improves air circulation around the plants and reduces the occurrence of humid microclimates which support pathogens. So these are some of the cultural or agronomic methods for managing pests. Every organism has its natural enemies. Therefore, biological pest management is probably the oldest method of pest management that is based on the ecological principles. Biological pest management is the use of one organism to manage the population of another organisms. Strategies for biological pest management include uh, parasitism. For example, the alpha weevil is a host for a wasp which hatches inside and eventually destroys the weevil. Second is prey uh, predator relationships. The predators feed on other living organisms, uh, for example, certain birds prey on insects and rodents. Structural adaptations of plants include a thick cuticle which prevents the entry of pathogens and interferes uh, with the piercing of sucking insects. Likewise, uh, the presence of hair-like structures on leaf and other organs uh, creates obstructions for different insect pests and pathogens. The biochemical basis of uh, defense include uh, different compounds which are produced by plants, for example, pyrethrum from chrysanthemum and nicotine from tobacco have insecticidal action. Phytoalexins are chemicals uh, exuded by certain plants uh, on being injured and these phytoalexins are toxic to the invading insects or pathogens and certain plants have uh, some repellent chemicals that uh, for example onion or garlic have strong scents that repel aphids. Certain trap plants like lettuce for chrysanthemum and uh, canola or mustard for wheat uh, alternate hosts for different insect pests. In biocontrol strategies, uh, certain fruits may be protected by the suspension of bacterium bacillus to delay brown rot that is caused by a fungus monilinia fruticola. And lastly, the use of resistant cultivars is an effective strategy to ward off certain pathogens and insect pests. So the main advantages of uh, biological pest management are that they are safer to apply and resistant cultivars are cheaper than pesticides. And natural enemies such as uh, trichogramma or chrysoperla are used to, uh, to uh, keep the pest populations below their economic threshold level. Among physical or mechanical pest management methods, uh, number one strategy is use of various kinds of traps. Traps may be set to catch uh, large vertebrates such as rats, uh, fly catchers which are used in the greenhouses to trap insects, uh, light traps to uh, trap insects like army worm and pheromone traps uh, for example for pink ball worm. So this is a very effective strategy for catching different insect pests. Hand picking of insect pests in small scale crop production, mechanical barriers such as fences or trees and appropriate tillage operations during crop growth to reduce weed population and after crop harvest to incorporate or uh, control crop residues. Solarization in the field and sterilization in the controlled environments uh, use heat to control different kinds of pathogens in the soil. And lastly, the use of UV radiation to sterilize the controlled environment such as uh, greenhouses and other enclosures and gamma radiations to prolong the shelf life of produce in various storages. So these are some of the physical pest management methods that can be effectively implied depending on the type of insect pests or pathogens. 
appropriate legislative measures and quarantine measures are required to prevent spread of pests across the borders plant quarantine is the use of legislation to control the movement of plants through import export uh, across the borders if the quarantine measures are not uh, appropriate this may lead to the introduction of new insect pests such as american bollworm or weed species such as phalaris minor or dumbi city so it is critical to implement the agriculture related laws as well as ensure the quality of quarantine measures chemical pest management or the use of pesticides uh, which are the chemicals used to kill pests is the last resort to manage pests although it is a very effective and rapid method of controlling various kinds of pests different kinds of pesticides are used uh, for example herbicides for controlling weeds defoliants to cause premature leaf drops to facilitate harvesting for example in soybean and cotton insecticides against insects fungicides against fungi nematicides against nematodes rodenticides against rodents miticides against mites aviicides against birds and bactericides uh, against bacteria these pesticides can be developed from natural products uh, such as uh, neem or pyrethrum or tobacco or other living organisms and they can also be developed from artificial compounds or synthetic products different mode of actions uh, include contact action the contact insecticides kill upon making physical contact with the target organism and uh, stomach action which kills upon ingestion by uh, the insects systemic uh, pesticides uh, become part of the insect or uh, the plant and they can control different insect pests and weeds some pesticides uh, do not kill pests but they can repel them with their strong odors and fumigants attack the respiratory system of the target or organism and they are used uh, on soil or used in storehouses against stored grain pests the utmost care uh, is required for formulation and application of pesticides for protecting crops against various kinds of pests the indiscri the indiscriminate use of various pesticides uh, have resulted in the development of uh, resistant strains for example in cotton based systems of pakistan the indiscriminate use of pesticide have resulted in the development of resistance in white flies and different bollworms pests are annoying organisms of animal or plant origin that are detrimental to humans or human concerns such as crops and livestock in order to manage pests uh, it is highly recommended to use an integrated pest management approach because agriculture in the integrated pest management approach agriculture is considered as an agro ecosystem so we need a holistic approach or an interdisciplinary approach that is not reliant on a single approach for example if we are just using a chemical approach this may lead to the development of resistance and if we are suppressing one particular species of insects or pathogen this may result in a shift in the balance of agro ecosystem in favor of a new pest so ipm is based on three basic principles which are uh, the ecological base the economic threshold level of uh, natural pest populations so we need to keep the pest populations below levels 
that can cause economic loss and pest suppression not eradication according to fao ipm or integrated pest management is the careful consideration of all available pest control techniques and subsequent integration of the appropriate measures that discourage the development of pest populations and keep pesticides and other interventions to levels that are economically justified and reduce or minimize risk to human health and environment ipm emphasizes the growth of a healthy crop with the least possible disruptions to agroecological systems and supports the natural pest control mechanisms